Hi everyone, I hope you all had a great weekend. Today for ELA, we are going to read the story Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright, the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow and gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out, if you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy, against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was, and I waited. He looked up, as if reaching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, Hoo! 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 The sound of a great horned owl. Hoo! 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 Again he called out, and then again, after each call, he was silent. And for a moment, we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged. I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl and sometimes there isn't. We walked on, I could feel the cold, as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word, if you go owling you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf was over it. It was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind the black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over my scarf, over my mouth, and I listened hard. And then Paul cal called out, Hoo! 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 
I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but he could open his mouth and an echo came threading its way through the trees. Who, who, who? Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, who, who, who? Just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of a meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths. The heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at each other. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as I walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. The end. So today we read the story Owl Moon. We have been talking a little bit about setting and we know that setting means where or when the story takes place. So I want you to answer a few questions on your own. So after I ask you a question, please pause the video, take some time to answer the question, and then you can resume the video. So question number one, who is this story about? Number two, what happens in the story? Number three, when and where does this story happen? One more question. What did you imagine seeing as you listened to the story? What did you imagine hearing or feeling? So we know in Owl Moon, this story is about the child and their father. And the child and their father go owling or they go out into the woods and look for owls. The child talks about how they have to be very quiet or the owls won't come out. And the setting is somewhere in the woods at nighttime because they said it was kind of dark and then all they could see was the big moon in the clearing. So if you were to write a story about an outdoor place, what place might you choose? So this is about an outdoor place in the woods, but if you were to write your own story, what might your setting be? Today I want you to write a few sentences. It can be between five or 10 sentences 
and I want you to explain or write a story about a setting. So pick a specific place and write a little bit about that. Thank you.